Hey traders, checking out of the stock market today. So shaping up for the potential of daily consolidation to begin, but overall the bears didn't do a whole bunch of proving today. I'll show you the short-term examples of what I mean and what we're looking for for daily consolidation to be confirmed into tomorrow. Before we get to the charts, we've got another free ebook link in the description and comments of this video. It's about the seven trading sins that we need to overcome. We'll go over what they are, reasons why traders make the same mistakes, understanding our own behavior, and tips to overcome these sins. Check it out. Free info. S&P 500. So we're heading into this week looking for daily consolidation. And as I've laid out all past week, I currently have a solid amount of bull swings that I have been taking some profit on, but I will be holding a core of Tesla, Facebook, MSOS long during daily consolidation. I am going to sit through daily consolidation holding those names. So knowing that, I am actively scouting short positions to offset that drop. I don't want my account to drop as these names consolidate. I want my account to keep going up. So I've had a bear bias and I had it Friday as well just in the short term. It doesn't mean I'm bearish the market. It means that with how I am positioned, I need bearish positions to protect. So Friday, I attempted to short the Chinese names. I looked for a top fishing play on NIO and I stopped out. So I stopped out with a small loss, but swing positions kept going up and offset that loss. Did the same thing today. And I'll go over that as we get there. But in today's instance, it allowed for my account to drop with my swing positions, but my account ending up higher by a few a three day maker today because of that NIO short. So that is my mindset. I am giving bullish longer term positions a chance in the one in a million chance, whatever you wanna call it, that the S&P 500 is a two month bull flag. And I'm giving bulls that chance so I know that I am protecting those positions on a daily basis with my day trading. When I'm confident in the bulls, I'll lean more aggressively on the bull side and I'll increase bull exposure. And when I'm confident in the bears, I'll increase bear exposure. So in the broader market right now, I consider today a win for bulls because the whole market is looking for daily consolidation. Bears are looking for this to be a, a bear bounce, or I should say a bear market bounce that ends up fading and giving it back. And even bulls, you know, I am bullish over the last week, but I'm looking for daily consolidation because I know it's inevitable. And some names like Facebook haven't even changed the daily trend coming off of the low. But today we had an instance where, okay, bears start the day in control. All right, looks like daily consolidation is shaping up. Nice win for the bears. This bounce, and I was actually watching QQQ more, but the bounce that we saw from the low of the day, this is more significant. I'm not at the beginning. Let's start at the beginning. Bears in full control to start the morning. Big drop, five minute stair step. V-shaped bounce. That is not what the bears wanna see. The bears wanna see a bounce that then results in a new low of the day to keep a downtrend going. The V-shaped bounce was a big win for the bulls. We then had Powell speaking. And as Powell was talking, we had last Friday, the probability that the FOMC first week of May, probability that a 75 to one point rate hike was coming was 44% chance. After Powell was done speaking today, those probabilities went up all the way to 62%. Right now, they're sitting at maybe 55, 57%. So from Friday, we now have a significantly elevated probability of a higher rate hike coming the next FOMC. So this is the market pricing that in. The drop that we saw here that really helped the bears, they needed this help. This drop right here is the market pricing in Powell's comments and pricing in an increased probability for a higher rate hike the first week of May. But then into the end of the day, bulls came out on top. We didn't close weak. We didn't close near the low. So all in all, for me, it's a win for the bulls because everybody's looking for daily consolidation. And while it is potentially shaping up, it's not convincingly shaping up. So what I would need to see is the low of today break tomorrow. Keep it simple. Higher low every day on this bounce. If the S&P 500 futures chart breaks the low of today, daily consolidation is then underway. And again, the things that we're looking for when daily consolidation begins to help us determine is this bullish or is this bearish, retracement size, volume behind the pullback, comparative to bull volume on the way up. What does the hourly trend look like? Do we reach hourly oversold conditions? Does hourly oversold conditions mark our low? 
Do we see an hourly oversold bounce that then drops to a lower low? These are all things that I'm going to be watching for. And retracement's going to be the biggest one. Because if we pull back and hold daily EMA 12, it's very healthy consolidation that will have us looking for continuation. If we pull back significantly, then we'll be looking for an equilibrium. But again, the fact that probabilities for a higher hike increase that significantly, yet we're still not confident daily consolidation is shaping up, for me, it's a win for the bulls. That being said, I'm fairly flat right now because I did swing a decent amount bearish, a decent amount bullish, and I will even that out, or I am even, I will lean one side or the other tomorrow with day trading positions, depending on the setup that we get. So NASDAQ's the same thing. Bears won the morning. V-shaped bounce, big red flag for bears. Powell helping, but even with Powell's help, I mean, we're, we're closing just fine. Look at the four-hour EMA 12. We've been holding four-hour EMA 12 this entire bounce, S&P 500 as well. We can see another leg up. It's definitely on the table. Very curious to see how we shape up into the open tomorrow. SMH, same thing. We pulled back a bit, still a higher low every day, still closing up near the high of this move. 270.86 is a very key resistance level. You can see we've topped out a lot right around 270, and we topped out right there again today. So there is a wall of resistance, and there's a lot of names that have this similar wall being tested. Has not broken yet. If we reject, we scout the daily higher low, and we look for all the clues that I just mentioned to help us gauge is it healthy consolidation or not. Here's Google and Google's wall of resistance. We broke it with zero follow through. Here's Tesla and Tesla's wall of resistance. Look at all these tops in the 940s. And we're back here, 944, I'm rounding, but 944, 948, 946, 944, and today, 943. So very clearly, this is a resistance zone. Tesla looked great today, compared it to everybody else. We gapped up, we saw follow through. So very pleased with this swing position. At this point, I've sold all that I'm gonna sell into this bounce. And again, I'm going to hold through daily consolidation, giving the bulls a chance to break further and to see further bounce. If we reject from this resistance and break the low of today, 907, we scout the daily higher low. If daily EMA 12 holds on the back test, it's a daily bull flag, and we need to break both of those or that wall of resistance. But that's only if the bears prove it. The burden of proof is on the bears in the short term to start daily consolidation. The burden of proof is on the bulls mid-term daily and weekly time frame to prove to us that a fear bottom is hit for the foreseeable future. So there, there are different things that we're looking for on different time frames. So the burden is on the bears to break the lows of today for daily consolidation to begin. If 907 does not break tomorrow on Tesla, bulls keep full control of this bounce. Healthcare sector is our lead bull sector. It's still forming a higher low every day. Yes, it's a bearish reversal doji, but the low today must break tomorrow for daily consolidation to be underway. And then we've got a ton of space for a daily higher low to form from here. Financial sector, higher low each day over the last seven days, daily inside bar today. We actually broke resistance, but only by four pennies. So can the bears break the low today to start daily consolidation? Another factor when daily consolidation begins, is it all of our major sectors at the same time breaking the low of their previous day? Or is only QQQ dropping and XLV and XLF are holding up? And we see that rotation game going on. That's another thing that I'm watching for during consolidation. If it's one sector at a time or a couple sectors at a time, it's more bullish than if it's all sectors at the same time. So again, just laying out the scenarios. What do bulls want to see? What do bears want to see? And knowing what each of those scenarios are, regardless of what I am. Got to put on those different glasses. IWM consolidated more so than most sectors today. We tested the low of Friday. It broke by six pennies. So we're right there knocking on the door in daily consolidation. 209.05 resistance. We rejected under that level by less than a dollar. If that low of 203.94 breaks, we scout a daily higher low. Bulls have proven to do to get over that level to put two months worth of bears underwater. But if we do not break that level... Bears can hang their hat on that and have confidence. Well, it's a double top at weekly resistance. So bulls are improving it. So I'm going to stick in my 
bearish position. This is just a dead cat bounce. If we don't break that resistance level, they can keep that thought process. Biotech sector, weakest sector today, growth names leading the way down. And so its daily consolidation is underway. We're coming off the low. We have not confirmed a daily uptrend to the bulls at this point. So that is certainly a must. Again, we've seen big bounces in the past that just gave it all back. So we must hold 80 and break 92.78 to confirm a daily trend change back to the bulls. Hourly, we'll be keeping an eye out to see if we hit oversold conditions. The hourly trend must change back to the bulls for a daily higher low to be shaping up. MSOS, at this point, I've sold half my swing position, sold half my Tesla swing position, sold 40% of my Facebook position over the last today or yesterday, or Friday, I should say. And MSOS is a daily inside bar. If it breaks bare, consolidation underway. Just like Facebook, just like XBI, we're coming off the low. If the bulls do not prove a daily trend change, bears keep complete confidence on these names. There are other names like Tesla that have already confirmed a weekly uptrend. It's completely different than a name that has yet to confirm a daily uptrend. So Facebook, MSOS, they're in the same boat. I'm giving the bulls a chance to confirm that daily trend change. But again, protecting during daily consolidation. And this style of trading is new to me. It's something I am practicing. And it's going well so far. CCJ, breakout for uranium. Ton of headline euphoria. CNBC is clearly long uranium with how they've been covering it over the last couple of weeks. So I did make an entry into the end of the day here just for the hourly bull flag. I just like the potential here for things to really get going. And I'm not extremely confident of that. Otherwise, I would have a larger position. But it was just enough for me to say, okay, big strong start to the morning. We're in gap filled territory. We're at 12 year highs. So that's another reason I'm interested. 12 year highs and a gap to fill in the 36s, which is still way above the current price. So here is where we're trading right now within this range. Actually, not yet. We still have another level to clear. So we enter gap fill territory. If we get over 3287, and we're currently at 30. So need to get to gap fill territory to things, for things to really heat up, but it is the highest level in over a decade and it's a strong hourly uptrend. And there's a headline today where we saw a big bump where Russia might blah, 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 uranium expor exports. So again, you can see how powerful that headline was. Just that one five minute candle saw a 4% plus move. So if we lose the hourly uptrend, I'll bail out of this swing position real quick and look for a better entry on a daily higher low. But uranium's heating up. We know commodities overall are hot. A lot of commodities cooled off and are now range bound like oil and gold that we're about to look at. But uranium names are not range bound. At least CCJ is not. So keep it an eye as long as the daily uptrend remains intact. So NIO trade that I took today, we'll go over that real quick, then we'll get to commodities and wrap it up. So NIO was just a top fishing play, high of Friday, 21.24. I know I'm scouting daily consolidation. I am confident that even minimal daily consolidation will be a 10% drop. That's a, a very modest target after a 60% move in four days. So I see the open, I wait for things to start trading. We had to wait. Again, you have to wait a couple minutes on these Chinese names, but head back up towards 21. I short it in the upper 20s, 2090 or so, top fishing 21. My stop goes over, it's top fishing 2124. My stop goes over 2130. And that was that. And that was a very nice trade that then dropped 8% from the high of the day. So I, I then went from my day trading position size, 9% drop. I went from my day trading position size down to my swing trading position size on that initial move down. I think when 2050 break broke, I took some profit. And I did a little bit of flipping, playing these 15 minute ranges on NIO. For example, I did reshort this little double top, take a little profit. But in the end, I do have a bearish position right now for the possibility that daily consolidation begins from here. 
And this is a protection play against my longs. So we'll see how we shape up into tomorrow. But not confident, you know, that bounce into the end of the day in the broader market. If you close at the low of the day, we're confident that we, the daily consolidation is shaping up. But here's NIO with just a 30 minute equilibrium that could break bull. Commodities, the dollar, if you are bullish, stocks or crypto or commodities, you want to see the dollar break this 97.71 support level into weekly consolidation. We're just tightening up here. So high, low, lower high, double bottom, anything under 99.29 is just another lower high. So clear tightening daily range and watching to see if, if this daily tightening range breaks, does it bring a spike in volatility to commodities? We'll have to see. Gold, I entered a position in GLD and SLV today. The, the thesis of the trade is this is our weekly higher low. If this is not our weekly higher low, bulls, that's a red flag. Because at that point, the retracement size is very significant and we can trade within this range for a very long time. I mean, look at this range right here of $150 that we traded within for month after month after month. And here we currently have a range of more than that, $170. And if we see another leg down, if this is not our weekly higher low, it's gonna be more than that. So this must be the weekly higher low. So I entered on the 12 hour higher low first thing this morning and the bulls followed through really nicely from that. So very quickly in the green, if we confirm 12 hour trend changes to the bulls, rather than using this level as my stop, I'm gonna use this level as my stop to have very minimal risk. And the bulls have proving to do to prove to me that our weekly higher low is set. I'm then going to scout a weekly lower high to be the result of any bounce, but we're not confident our weekly higher low is set yet. And as soon as we started seeing broader stock market weakness, the metals turned it on a bit for the bulls. So this is also a potential play for if my bull positions consolidate on the daily, these metals, if they go inverse, can help offset that. But if we drop down and break 12 hour support without changing the trend, it's a red flag. Silver's the same deal, 12 hour higher low, entered SLV, bulls must break 25.54, otherwise they don't prove a thing. Weekly higher low must form. Miners are stronger, GDX, daily trend change back to the bulls confirmed, weekly higher low set. So the weekly higher low is now 35.67, it's a potential bull flag. The miners are stronger than the metals right now. Why did I not trade the miners? because the miners require more attention. The miners, I have to be watching the metals. I have to be watching the broader market because there's an impact there as well. There's just more correlations that I have to be watching. If I'm in GLD and SLV, all right, stick it back here. I don't really have to pay much attention. And that's really what it boils down to. My attention is valuable and I am choosing those positions because they require minimal attention. But if I were only trading metals and miners, I would be in the miners, not the metals right now. Or maybe both, but just minor with more exposure. But this is just a, a little side note for my current positioning in the markets overall. Oil, daily equilibrium on watch. Stair step pattern up, stair step pattern down, stair step pattern up. Big time bounce. We know when there is extreme volatility in both directions, we scout the equilibrium. Inside bar bull break marked the low. Now we scout the lower high, anything under 126.42 on the May futures contract. And the four-hour uptrend is our guide. So bulls in complete control, plenty of space for a four-hour higher low to form. But we know the most likely scenario is to be looking for a daily lower high. Bounce retracement is already over 50%, so bulls are pleased with the size of the bounce at this point. And I'm going to be watching for oil to more likely than not tighten up on the daily into the start of May. Nope, the start of April. So that's where we stand overall. Daily consolidation. Is it going to begin tomorrow or not? Bears have to prove it by breaking lows of today. Anything less than breaking the lows of today, bulls win. And the longer that bulls fend off daily consolidation, the more impressive it is. But I'm watching for daily consolidation on a daily basis. And we'll see how we're shaped up. Tomorrow, four hour EMA 12 supports on our futures charts, our great guides. Don't forget to do good things. Thanks for watching. Look at that face. Wasted.
tulips are just starting to poke out. Starting to uncover all the beds. This is rhubarb just starting to come up. And this is where all the asparagus is going to come up. Potentially some starting. We're doing some planting today. We got poppies, carrots, and peas. Also have all these onions from last year that I didn't eat. So some exponential gains here. Just stick them back into the ground. Never have to buy onion seed again. So the prep work of getting the beds ready, I uncover them, then I go through them with a scuttle hoe and get all these little weeds out. And not gonna use any manure this year because I started the beds with a bunch of manure in them, but I will add some fertilizer, just some organic granular fertilizer. In this bed, we're gonna do peas along the edge to climb up the chicken wire. And then we'll put the carrots in front of them. So here's what we look like after some prep. Just going to leave all the weeds in the corner there, let them die a bit before moving them to a compost pile. Found a lost potato that helped somebody get through the winter. Now from here you just put the seeds in, plant this, the pea seeds about one every inch or two inches. It's going to rain tomorrow so I don't have to worry about watering them, but other than that, just got to stay on top of watering them. Make sure they stay damp. And then as they get big enough, I'll start helping them climb and find that fence.